Another story here, courtesy of TheGuardian.com, about the Great Barrier Reefs bleaching. And this is dated March 29th, by the way, just a few days ago. And Ocean Watch was hoping, and all these stories allude to the same thing, warm ocean water is the culprit, why the, the Great Barrier Reef is turning white. I disagree. I always have disagreed. But I want to read what they say. Um, just, just a couple of segments here. Ocean Watch had ex uh, expressed hope that the cooling effect of Cyclone Debbie on ocean temperatures could have alleviated the pressure the reef is under and prevented further bleaching. Um, the reef has suffered through unusually warm waters in 2017 and much of 2016, prompting sustained and in some cases severe bleaching. If I'm not mistaken, over 50% um, yeah, I think over 50% of the total reef is suffering some sort of bleaching um, issue. But they go on to say in this article here that they hope the wild weather would have brought deeper, cooler waters to the surface while shading the coral from the sun, reducing light stress. Kind of let the cat out of the bag right there because I've always believed. It is light stress. It is UV light. UV light is what's damaging the Great Barrier Reef. It's what's turning it white. If you've studied UV light, I know some of you are much more uh, well-versed than I am on UV light, but I've been studying it for a while. Am I an expert? Absolutely not. But I know the different frequencies, A, B, C, and there's even others. That's exactly what they are. They're unique frequencies. They vibrate at a different level. If you really want to get technical, everything has a vibration. That's what makes it what it is. It, the atoms vibrate uniquely. Same situation here. The coral is under stress from UV light. Healthy coral has algae. They depend on each other to survive. It's like peanut butter and jelly, man. Keep it simple. Algae depends on the coral, and the coral depends on the algae, right? Well, this is what's happening. The coral, um, I'm sorry, the algae has booked. They don't want anything to do with the coral. The coral is vibrating at a frequency the algae does not like. The UV light is not killing the algae. No. In fact, UV light can't kill algae. And to take it a step further, warm water and algae are like peanut butter and jelly. Get it? So where'd the algae go? If the waters are warmer, algae should be abundant. Right or wrong? Right. The Great Barrier Reef is vibrating at a different frequency courtesy of the new UV light. It's turning it white. The algae does not like the frequency. It's foreign, so it's leaving, causing even more stress on the Great Barrier Reef. And it's a sign of a much bigger problem that the Earth is going through. It's not just the Great Barrier Reef. This is one example of a much bigger problem. So it's not the warmer waters. If it were warmer waters, the algae would be thriving around the, the Great Barrier Reef. UV, B, and C can kill germs, but they cannot kill algae. Have you ever seen a green swimming pool? It's usually during the middle of summer when it's the warmest, and that algae just absolutely thrives in that warm water. So if it were warm water around the Great Barrier, there'd be tons of algae. The barrier is vibrating at a unique frequency, much like what I'm about to show you. And I don't know why. I can't explain it. These stop signs, for some reason, red pigment. And I've got examples from all over the earth. Red pigment in stop signs is being stressed and turning white. I don't know why. I noticed this a few weeks ago. And it happened relatively quickly. And it wasn't because of warm water. Because of light. UV light. Okay, here's another example. This was sent in from Idaho. I'm going to show you another one. 
uh, this one here, Idaho as well. UV light. It's not warm ocean waters. Here's another one. Okay, this one's out here in Arizona. That faces south. Usually the, the signs that are under the most stress face either east, south, or west. And what seems to be getting hardest hit on land is the color red. I'm going to show you another example. Look at this. I noticed this about a month ago. You can see the sign. It's a red sign on a building. You can see the letters that are in the sunlight. This one here is not. This faces northeast just at a uh, optimal angle where the sunlight never reaches that age. All year long it gets to the T. And it retracts and comes back. You can see the entire year right here through these letters. That's how far the sun moves according to this <laughs> sign. It doesn't touch the H. It's always in the shade. Another example of red being under stress and compromised. I've shown you examples of license plates on cars that are completely obliterated. I know you can just easily dismiss it as cheap paint, but I'm not that easily convinced. It's vibrating at a different frequency and it's causing it to turn white courtesy of the UV light. Um, here's another example. This sign here though I will say looks a little bit old. I do get that paint fades over time. I understand that. But I don't think it fades super fast. Like this one here you can tell it's not that old. This one's out of Alabama. Got them all over the world. Ecuador. Here's one from Ecuador. You can tell which parts in the sunlight the most. The color's gone. In this case, it was black. He sent me another one, too, that uh, said, wasn't, well, this one's a little older, but there was another one he sent that was uh, less than two months old, and it was already being compromised. Here's one here, too. You can tell that's in the shade. That's in the direct, indirect. Totally obvious. Sunlight is having a heyday on it. Here's one here he sent that was just a few days old and it's already starting to bleach. Look at it. And this is heat resistant paint. Heat resistant paint. He went down to City Hall and asked him about it. It's made by 3M by the way. It's not made in uh, China like you all want to suggest. It's made by 3M. It always has been. It has to meet some sort of certain criteria. And it's just not holding up. Here's another one. I'm not sure where this one's from. Oh, New Mexico. That was just sent to me. Bleached white. Uh, Alabama, Idaho, New Mexico, Arizona. Oh, I want to show you a building. I took these pictures a while back. This side here, you can tell, faces south. Or I'm sorry, faces north. See, the colors aren't compromised. Okay, this isn't a brand new building, but it's not that old. Now I'm going to show you the other sides of the building. See? See how it's compromised, the color? This face is south. Gone. Totally stressed. Here's another side of it. Gone. And it happened rather quickly. Just like the Great Barrier Reef. Okay? But I think the, the, the reef might have a chance to recover if it doesn't get too far. This paint, there's no, there's no repairing it. It has to be replaced. So I've got more examples. These are just a few. They're from all over the world. I'm sure if you look around, you're going to see some in your neck of the woods too. Um, it's something that I've just noticed, guys, probably in the last eight months, me personally. I don't know what we got here. Oh, yeah, there's another example. That gator, that's not mud. No, if it, if, if, if it was mud, it would be all over his tail back here on the bottom. It's the top part of his body. Something happened to his skin pigment. There was other ones too, not just him. So that's not mud. So we're on the same page. Let's see if I can find some more signs. Here's the one here, I think. Lady just sent me some today. Yeah, that one there's bleached out. I don't have it in this folder. It's in another folder. Some red signs, similar to this red here, but it was at a Target. And those poles that stand out in front of Target that are red as you walk into the, the stores, they were bleached just like that. The, 
the, the red color pigment was gone and she said it happened sometime within the last seven, eight or nine months. She wasn't really sure, but she knew it wasn't that long ago because it wasn't that long ago she said they were a rich, deep red. And it faced, I think she said east or, or, or west, but it was in the direct sunlight for a big portion of the day. And it just totally compromised the paint. So to me, it is definitely the UV light. Here's a scenario here where there's two stop signs. This one faces south. This one faces west. And they are both just completely bleached white. And they're not in the ocean water. So what's doing it to them? And this happened in 2016, 2017, sometime in that time frame. And that's the same time frame that they mentioned in this article that the Great Barrier Reef has been under a lot of stress in the year 2016 here through unusually warm waters in 2017 and much of 2016. What a coincidence. So were those signs. It's the UV light, my friends. I am 100% sure it's not the warm waters. And one way that we can determine that is by algae. Algae and coral are like peanut butter and jelly, but for some reason, the algae does not want anything to do with the coral. And I'll tell you why. It's vibrating at a different frequency because of the UV light. Believe it. During these uncertain times, I encourage you to be brave, be strong, be wise, and be alert. Thanks for watching.